Okay, so now, my friends, you've had time to check out the information sheet, the size charts. That was, I didn't want the numbers to just be so confusing. So that's why I took time in the first part one to actually explain what you are seeing and how you're going to use those numbers. So now you've had time to work up your swatch or either count out some uh, stitches. And you, of course, I hope that you just took, you know, just made a circle and drew in a little schematic because this is going to come in handy when we get ready to knit and try to keep up where things go. So here's my little schematic. I have that. And for my size, I've already gone over it. My numbers, I'm going to cast on 88 stitches. Now, before we get started on this one, just to let you know, I'm, uh, of course, I'm working on this one, and it's up to where I want to uh, start working the underarm. So this one will lay aside, and I will pick it up once we get to that point. So that I will have that much done. So we lay this one aside. Just to let you see that I'm working. <laughs> okay, now this is the one I've worn it so many times. It's all fuzzy now. But this is the one. This was my first sample. This is the one that I had to, uh, you know, make my corrections and tweak. And this is the one you're working on now. Now, as we get ready to start our ribbing. We're starting. This is top down. And we will be working and increasing. All right, on this sweater, the first one that I made, well, one of the first ones, okay, it wears good, it looks good, but the neck, the back of the neck, since we're not doing any short rows or a lot of uh, um, decreasing and thing on, uh, things on this sweater, it's a very, it's top down 101, just a nice, simple, easy knit, and the way I hopefully have it set up, you can just knit it any time and put things in and change things as you like. But the numbers, the overall pattern, is the same. So, all right, so in order to, we're going to start. So now you're going to make sure that you have plenty of markers, some stitch caps, some needle uh, caps, some paper or some kind of a, uh, you know, notebook to write down notes because now we will start to knit our, our ribbing and we will I will show you share with you the, the things I had to tweak and the things I had to make to change this one into something a little you know to that fits a little better at the neck. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? We've gone over that, so nothing else to do but now let's talk about And I'm going to be working in a different color yarn just because it's just easier to keep all the steps and uh, so that I can stay ahead of you. I can work a little bit on this one and switch back and forth. Okay, so now let me check my camera. Let's just see how close we are. And I need to come in because this. All right. Now let's talk. On my schematic for me, like I said, I have 88 stitches. But the first thing I need to tweak or to do to change this neckline so that it is not so loose and so wide. We are working on number nine needles. Uh, most of the time on sweaters like this, you would cast on with a smaller needle, like a number eight. But I wanted everything to be on the same gauge and, and in, in a nice proportion. You know, when you're larger size, um, sometimes eights pull in too much or, or it changes the gauge. So it just doesn't, it just doesn't feel that great to me. So I'm on a US number nine all the way through. And I hope you have gotten the right yarn and the needles also. Okay, now the first tweet. On your schematic, my sleeve at the top, I'm going to cast on or use eight stitches. Well, in order to make this neck line 
that we're about to start, the one by one ribbing, smaller. This is what I'm going to do. Now, look at your schematic. And yours may say, uh, some of the X sizes may say 12, some may say 16. So whatever that number is for one sleeve, the stitch count for just one sleeve, I'm going to remove eight stitches off this needle. I'm taking you the long scenic route <laughs> so that you have the steps right in your mind. You can just like, okay, this is a step, this is, you know, because that's so how I knit. So, right off the bat, I have 88 stitches. I'm going to remove, not throw away, when we get to the body, when we get to the last row or so of the ribbing, we will have to put these stitches back on in order to have the right stitch count to set in our markers. Does that make sense? Look at your number. All I need is one sleeve, however many stitches for one sleeve. So one sleeve for me will be eight stitches. So I'm going to take off, let's see, two... Four, six. I'm just going to remove those and kind of in my mind put them on a shelf. There are eight stitches I've taken off. So now I'm down to 80. And you're down to however many you had to deduct. So now I have 80 stitches. Now I want to start my one by one ribbing. And who remembers when we're knitting in the round, an even number works great for one by one ribbing like when we get to the cuffs. But when you're working back and forth flat, you have to have an odd number. I'm taking you the long route so that you keep every step separate. Every step has to be, you need to take account for every step. So, real quick, I'm going to add back just one stitch. I just cast on one stitch. Now I have 81. Does that make sense? I'm trying to keep it clear. <laughs> All right. Now, let's talk. Do this. So now you need to write that down. That's the one that's already a tweak that we have done to this neck. The stitches for our one by one, by one ribbing. We deducted one sleeve stitch count. Whatever yours is, 12 or 8 or 16. We took that off. We're laying them aside. But I do have to put one stitch back on so that I have an odd number to start this ribbing. Now, the next thing is some people are slippers or knitters. On the first and last stitch, they are edge stitches. They're not part of the ribbing. They are just simply an edge stitch here and an edge stitch here. You can slip it or you can knit it like I do. That's your preference. So I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to knit this first stitch for me. Now all the stitches, till we get to the last stitch, are in the one by one ribbing. When I came on and I shared with you that I, you know, how I do my ribbing and um, my neck area, from the get-go, I always call this row a wrong side. The row that's on the, where I cast on. Unless I, I'm working from a pattern or a magazine or a book where they need this row for something, for part of the pattern. So this is a wrong side row. So the first stitch in my one by one ribbing, I will bring my yarn to the front. Now I start with a purl one. It'll be a little loose, just kind of take at it. Knit one. You're in front again. Now I want to purl one. In back so that I can knit. And purl. And knit. And purl. And continue across the row. To the opposite end. I will see you on the opposite end to make sure that we all end the same, whatever your uh, stitch count. So, and if you get lost, just back up a few stitches, find a knit stitch. You can look at it, look at the stitch, and you can go knit, purl, knit, purl. Now I need to knit, and that will get you back on track, and just continue cross working. 
Okay, see so you back at the end of the row. Okay, so I'm up to the end of my row and I am, let's see, go back and check, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. I'm ready for a knit stitch, so I knit. And then the yarn in front, I purl. I'm in the one by one rib pattern, I knit. Yarn in front, I purl and knit. Now, if I, this is the wrong side, and if I start it with a purl, that means I have to end with a purl. So yarn in front. Now here's my last purl stitch of my ribbing. And the one stitch that is left, remember, is an edge stitch. Either you slip it or you knit it. I'm a knitter, so I put my yarn in back, and I knit that last stitch. Okay, so we have tweaked our, we have We've worked our first row of our one by one ribbing for our neck and we have tweaked it by simply taking out the sleeve, uh, one sleeve count of stitches. Like, you know, like I said, I took out eight and you look on yours and I think most of them are eights or some, some people are twelves. But So that makes, that pulls it in just a little bit more and we didn't have to worry about any kind of decreasing for as uh, manipulating the stitches or anything or knitting two together or something then try to remember all right so now we turn the work of course we're on the right side of the work so now on the right side we just simply start again we I knit the first stitch now when you look the ribbing it will start with a knit one and purl one see just the opposite because we're on the right side Knit. And now you can really read the stitches too. Yarn in front, you can see that's a purl stitch. And yarn in back, you can see that's a knit stitch. And now we're on our way. We've done our first tweak. And we're knitting, working on the top neck edge of this top down sweater. Now, we will continue to work since row one was a wrong side. Row number one was a wrong side, so that means all odd numbers will be on the wrong side. This is row two, so all even numbers will be on the front. I want you to work up and finish row six. Row 6 is an even number. It will be on the right side. You finish row 6, and when you turn the work, you will be on the wrong side on row 7. Everybody will be together on row 7. That's the row. We're going to put back those stitches you took off that represented at least one sleeve. I have to put back 8. You put back whatever the number that's on your schematic. So I will see you at the end of row 6. And when you turn the work, we'll be on row 7, and it will be a wrong side. All right. Huh, we're on our way. It's easy so far, right? Good. <laughs> All right, see you back in just a, just a minute. All right, so I have I'm worked up to row 7. Row 7 is the wrong side of our uh, neck piece. But it's also the side that we're going to add back those stitches we took off when we started uh, working the one by one rib. So in order to do that, I'm just going to eyeball it so I don't have to give you another formula, you know, another, uh, any more math. Let's put it that way. So all I, I just took each end and then I just found maybe a center point. You can count. I'm just eyeballing it just to keep from having to do any more math. So I put myself a marker. That just reminds me where the center of uh, this neck piece. And I, for my size, I have to add back eight stitches. This just helps me to add four stitches on this side of the marker and then four stitches on this side. You know, if you were, uh, there, I think there was one side, a couple of sides that are 12, then you're gonna have to squeeze in at least six and then get to the marker and squeeze in another six on this side. And this is how we do it. So, just gonna push my stitches around. 
and I try to do them. I try not to get work all the way from the edge on each side. I try to put them more towards the center here. All right, off camera, I hope you recounted your stitches. I recounted mine. I made sure I had the right uh, amount of stitches. So now, since I have 81, and now I need to put back eight stitches to raise my stitch count. All right, I the first stitch. Like I said, I, uh, I'm a knitter, so I knit the first and last stitch. We still have to work in this last row in the one-by-one one ribbing uh, stitch. So I knit my first stitch, and I see that the next stitch is a purl stitch, so I simply purl. And now I just go right back into my pattern. Just like this. And like I said, I'm going to start here at the mark and just kind of count back. Like, that could be one, maybe two, maybe three, and maybe four. So, like I said, I'm just going to eyeball it. Now, what I want you to do is to work over to a knit stitch. When you get to a knit stitch, I want you to pick up the bar right between the stitch and put it on the left hand needle. With the yarn in back to knit, I want you to knit in the back loop of that stitch you just put on that bar. You knit into the back. We're making one. I'm trying to keep from having a hole. So, and then give it a nice little pull. All right, then continue on in the one by one rib uh, pattern. So I knit one, I'm back into knit one. Purl one, knit, purl, I knit, purl, okay, I'll go a little further before I put, that was one, was one increase that I just made, alright, so I have maybe one, two, okay, maybe we'll do three right here do one more all right so I, I see that I'm coming to a knit stitch I reach down I pull the bar up and I place it on my left hand needle now be sure the yarn is in back of the work to knit through the back loop okay this is increase number two now get back into pattern see what the next stitch is it's a knit stitch so I'm going to work across, see how much I can, how fast I can do this. You're just reading your stitches and you're kind of looking ahead to see where you can get all of your increases on this side. Okay, I'm up and I see that I can... You want, to get, you want to work towards, get as close to this mark as possible. So I see that I can put number three right here. I have a knit stitch. I lift the bar up in between, put it on the left-hand needle, yarn in back, and knit through the back loop. There we go. Just knit through the back loop, and then get right back into pattern. So I knit one, I purl one, and I knit... And purl. And knit. Okay, I have a few stitches. I see the mark coming up. I go on over a little bit. So that I'll have one just about in the center, like, I don't know, just close to the mark. All right, let's see. Can I get one? Okay, I can get one right here. Okay. There's a knit stitch there. I lift the bar up, yarn in back, knit through the back loop. Oops, can't hardly pick that one up. I think my yarn is split. There we go. Knit the stitch through the back loop and continue across. Okay, continue across your row and adding the same number of increases on this side. Then, off camera, be sure to check and count all of your stitches. I started with 81. I'm adding back 
8. I will have 88 plus 1. Remember that one extra stitch that I had for the one by one ribbing. So I will still wind up with an odd number. So look at your um, at your schematic to see where you started. So off camera, I'll just count everything and then I'll see you back as we turn the work. And now we'll be ready to not only start our border, but also add our markers. Be sure to have lots of little markers so that we can separate according to your schematic and put the markers where every section is back in just a minute. Okay, so I did, I recounted my stitches and I have 89 for me. I have 88. I'm back up to the original number of 88. Uh, and then that one extra stitch that I had to you remember to put in for the one by one ribbing make, makes my number 89. Now you say, well, Jay, you know, you could, could we not just have taken that out? Yes, you could take that out. But like I say, since I'm starting with ribbing at the neck and we eventually when we get to the bottom of the sweater, there'll be ribbing there too. I just let it right down the back. And unless we were going to put a design or, or, you know, a cable or something where it would throw the count off. Or you may need an extra stitch to put something in. So voila, it's already there. But at least when I get to the bottom of the sweater and start doing my one by one ribbing to end the sweater I won't like oh man I don't have I have to make one now no it'll already be there and let me just say this if you knew and maybe you came up a little a shorter stitch or something you know, oh Jay I, I for some reason I'm short a stitch well on this row we're getting ready to do we're getting ready to the ribbing is ended now we're going to start the body you can just make one or knit into the front in the back of a stitch to add a stitch in case you're short a stitch so don't give up and don't start over <laughs> okay so now also on this row this is a right side row we just finished row seven we put back all the stitches that we had taken out on this right side row now we're going to add our border our edge border on this edge and this edge the first seven stitches will be a border and then we will start placing markers all along the way according to your own schematic to separate everything. So let me show you how that's going to look. Okay, so I can pull my yarn around here. The first seven stitches and the last seven stitches. This is a border we have worked before. I believe it was on back in June on my lemons and lace shawl. I said, now remember this little border. Um, just a little for guiding stitch, but it's just one I use all the time uh, because it's it's something that we can use to make little button bands or or just you know it's just an easy way to to help to make the front look real nice. So in this stitch, the first thing we're going to do we're going to knit three, one, two, and three. Okay, now yarn over. Then you will knit two together and then simply knit two stitches. One, two. Let me just check and see my camera, see if I'm on. Okay. Now, I am going to place just a yellow marker or something just to remind me that that is a border right there, those seven stitches. You will do this, these seven stitches and the what we just worked on every row knit three yarn over knit two together knit two on every row everybody you know it everybody will be in the same place to have this nice little button band so when we're done we don't have to pick up stitches all right so now i am ready uh, now first of all these seven stitches are part of my front my front I need 18 stitches for each front so I need 11 more stitches to make up the front so I need to knit over now I'm just knitting the rest of this sweater will be in stockinette knit on the front purl on the back so now I'm just gonna knit over and then I will stop and count and see if I have 18 in total 
stitches. I don't think I have enough, but let's count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18. Oh, I got it. <laughs> now, I'm going to put a different color marker, which will tell me every time I come to this marker, I know I will be increasing. So now I look at my schematic, and the next thing after my front is one sleeve. So I need eight stitches for me here. So I'm going to knit, just knit on the front, knit eight stitches. Let's count. Two, four, six, two more. And it's on this first go round, it's good to count everything twice. Make sure it's right. Two, four, six, eight. Now I can put another marker. I'm using red. I know I will be making an increase here. The next section of my schematic is my back and it is 36 stitches. So now I just settle in and see can I let's see how fast I can knit the 36 six stitches. Well, what do you think so far? I know we're just getting started on the knitted part, but could you understand or think that did the mat math make sense of, uh, you know, how to fit, make a fit, make a pattern to fit your body? For this simple sweater and of course we'll be using you don't have to do it you know we'll just keep uh, using the same numbers unless we actually change yarns and change needles if we go down to a size 7 we have to do, start all over with new numbers and we'll have to count and do all of that new swatches and everything but as long as we stay in this weight of yarn we're good to go all right I'm trying to get over I'll stop and count Let's see what we have. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 29. Okay, that's 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36. Stop. Okay. I have 36, but I also have that one extra stitch that floats because of the one by one ribbing. I always put it to the back number. So I'm going to knit one extra stitch to take care of that since I decide not to delete, you know, not to take it off, uh, you know, deduct it from the stitch count. I'm going to let it ride because, like I said, we're going to have ribbing at the bottom, but I, ha I like to put it in the back section. So I'm going to count again. Make sure it's always good to double count. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 21, 22, 24, 26, 27, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, and 1 makes 37 for me. Put my mark there. Now we should have, for my front, I should have 18 stitches. Uh, no, I've got to do a sleeve. I'm sorry. I've got one more sleeve to do first, so I need to do the eight stitches. Look at my schematic, Jay. Look at your, look at your schematic. Make sure you don't leave off your sleeve. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, now I'll put my marker. And now I should, for my front, should have 18 stitches left. Two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Now, I will knit the first 11. And then I will work the last 7 stitches. My little yarn over border or button band. In this case, for this sweat, I should have 7. It will take 7 stitches, 2, 4, 6, Two, four, six, one is seven. Now I'm going to put a mark, a marker there. 
to remind me and every row everywhere everybody knit one two and three yarn over knit two together and knit the last two and voila we have our markers in and we have started our border now of course when I turn the work this is the wrong side immediately the border you do not purl you simply repeat the pattern again knit one two and three yarn over knit those next two stitches together knit two one and two now I can bring my yarn in front slide the marker and I can purl all the stitches across to the end border just slide the markers as you go and purl all the stitches across I will see you back on the right side and guess what we will be ready to start our increase our increases in each at each section of our schematic I'm just gonna purl right on across sliding the markers make sure you don't drop any as you go just like that okay see you back on the right side take care okay if you've made it this far <laughs> let the knitting fun begin okay so I am on the right side of our sweater starting at the working top down we are still at the neck now we have all the markers in for our um, body we've looked at you looked at your own schematic and you we have put markers in now we are ready to start increasing at these markers so we start right here at the front edge as usual every row every time everywhere everybody <laughs> knit three now yarn over knit the next two stitches together and knit two that's our button band border slide the next marker which is really I'm just still in the my front uh, section and I try to use a different color marker just to remind me that this is where I do an increase and now we're going to get ready to increase all right this is about the simplest increase you can make on this sweater and everybody does it and it's really simple but it's it's a one to, to always know and to be able to do be, because it works up really fast and makes the sweater really nice and easy and uh, you know it's just real pretty and simple <laughs> okay so now I'm I knit up to one stitch before the marker there's a one stitch there's a marker I yarn over now I knit this stitch this becomes the center of that increase then I slide the marker now this is where you have to yarn over again and sometimes I'll have to hold it sometimes you might have to hold it in place so that it stays on this side of the marker so I slide the marker then I yarn over and you may have to hold it just kind of with your thumb or something yarn over now go ahead and start knitting across to the next marker we have increased when you hold it and look at it I mean I can see right now but there's an increase on this side of the marker and on this just simple yarn overs I'll pull up some yarn and I'm gonna see how fast we can get around this hole because I enjoy doing this so much <laughs> it's just a simple one people okay I see the next marker coming up I knit to one stitch before the marker I yarn over I knit that one stitch now I slide the marker and I yarn over and hold it 
stick my needle in and continue to knit to the next marker. I have just made two more increases. Just that simple. Top down 101. Said so this one, we, you know, just, oops, some kind of way I got a twisted stitch here. Oh, that's that's because I, that's that stitch that we knit into the back loop. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with my stitch? <laughs> okay, just keep knitting. Just keep knitting across to the next marker. Next time we do this sweater. We'll try a different button band, something with more lace or something like that. Or it just depends on the weather. If it's if it's still cold enough, maybe we could, I don't know if we'll put cables in or wait till the fall and do another one where we'll add some really pretty cables. So we'll just see once we get done with this one. But I do have another one with really pretty lace on the front edge. That really stands out. Okay, so I'm across, going across my back. That's where most of my stitches are. And I see the next marker coming up. I use red ones just to remind me to stop. <laughs> stop, Jay, stop. Okay, I get to the stitch before the marker. Yarn over. Knit the stitch. Slide the marker. Yarn over. Hold it if you have to, and then continue to knit across to the next increase marker. Let's do this. Push your stitches up. And I see one more coming up. One stitch before the marker. Yarn over. Knit that stitch. Then slide the marker. Then yarn over one more time and continue across to our border. And of course, so now I'm up to my border. Every row, every time, slide the marker. Knit three stitches. One, two, three. Yarn over. Knit two stitches together. Now knit two. Turn the work. And this sweater, of course, from this point on, is just done in stockinette. Knit on the front and purl on the back. Except for our borders. As soon as I turn, I am on the wrong side. And if you spread it out, you can see, sometimes I'll go back and just double check, make sure I didn't fall asleep. You know, I'm watching the Olympics. <laughs> make sure I didn't get carried away and forget to increase. All right, so now I'm on the wrong side. We're on our way now. That's all there is. Okay, one, two, three. Yarn over. Knit those next two stitches, that yarn over and that stitch together. Knit two, one, two. Yarn in front because all the stitches and the yarn overs we will just purl. So now you will purl back across the row to the last border and work it. When you get to a marker, just simply be careful. Don't lose any yarn overs. Slide the marker. Continue to work across. Just like that. Now. Okay. So. 
when you turn the sweater like it will be worn. We have our button band. You can even see the little first buttonhole right there. And we have increased back. We have all our markers in. And now you have a nice neck for your for your sweater as we start to work down the front of the sweater. Now you're going to look at your um, schematic and you're going to see how many times you need to just continue to work back and forth, increasing. Take your time. Every once in a while, a tip to new knitters, every once in a while, stop and go back. After a free row, stop, pull open, and see if you'll have a line. See, let me get on, let me change sweaters just so that you can see this. It just helps in case you forget, like I say, or look, don't. Just every once in a while, stop and see if that line is with all the yarn overs that you didn't miss one. You'll be able to tell if you if you miss one. So now you will work back and forth, putting your border on this side and on this side. I need it, or I need 26 increases, but I'm going to have you to work two increases short. For me, I will work up to 24 increases. That's when I will join you back to show you how I kind of stop these, I change the increase just so that we won't have a problem when we start to um, work our underarm. So if you have 20, uh, two increases, you're going to stop at 20, and I will join you then. We'll join back, and then, of course, if you have 24, you'll stop at, you know, 22. But stop at least two increases before you reach your goal number, minus 26. And then once I come back, I'll show you how to change we'll change that increase just to help us not to have to deal so much with all these holes when we get to the arm space another thing if you need more ease in your bust line once we start once we get to where we are going to pick up under the arm you, we will actually pick up stitches to give you more space under or along your breast line so you can add a few more stitches and you will be able to try your sweater on uh, just to kind of get a feel of it or if you, you know, or if you see if you need more stitches under there. But the underarm is a place where we will add, where we will pick up and add more length or more stitches along that bust line right here. We're not here quite here yet on this sweater, but we do have to pick up stitches once we get down. Uh, once we finish our increases well right now this is the fun part you're just gonna just knit and enjoy yourself take care not to miss any yarn overs take your time do a great job don't forget to do your borders stop two decrease increases before the number you need to uh, the number you need to reach and we will uh, we will come back together and then I'll show you how to close it off so that maybe it will, so we won't have such a problem with the holes that sometimes forms at the bottom of, at the arm, uh, under the arm. That's what I want to say, under the arm. So, so far, I'm working on this one and of course I just started that one. <laughs> That's why I have so many needles, people, because a lot of times I'll just cast on. Someone just, um, uh, sent me a message on YouTube and she said oh I uh, count me in I, I'm I want to join this and I said oh well I'm so glad you you're joining us and everything she says oh as long as we don't have to swatch <laughs> well you do have to swatch and that first part is the boring part but it's the most important if you ever get the little idea of the equation and the simple math I use my math is old-fashioned math you know the kids in school now they even first grade I mean they can just they can program little program computer programs they can do all kind of things but I still use old-fashioned long division math and I but I keep it simple and I try to explain it to you in simple terms because you really once you get that down how simple it is then like I say once we start knitting this we can just throw in you'll know how to center a pattern how to, just like we've done before on other other sweaters we'll be able to center uh, 
you know, we'll be able to put something in the back if you want something in the back. It's just a lot you can do. Like I said, I'm going to change the front edge, come up with new um, stitches to put in the front edge. We might do a cable. I know we're going to do a real fancy lace. Um, that's just a lot. So, don't let the math scare you. Don't get turned off by the first part of the video where you're going to have to sit and count. That's just part of knitting, people. Even in simple knitting, there's work to be done. But I'm telling you, oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> I wouldn't, I couldn't be on YouTube this long if I didn't enjoy it. I enjoy any type of challenge to figure out this sweater and how to figure it the way I think in my numbers, the way I use numbers and round my numbers up to numbers divisible by four. And so I'm just wishing you happy knitting. I will see you back and uh, we will start. But when we come back, we'll be close to the underarms and then we will actually get to a place where you can try on the sweater. And then we'll go from there. So take care, have fun, happy knitting. See you in just a little bit. Music